dear colleague friends comrades brothers and sisters i greet you with the greeting of islam assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh good morning good evening good afternoon and i wish that you are having a very peaceful prosperous life wherever you are especially at this time difficult time of covid surrounding us for the last nearly two years. Today, I'm going to talk about the 14th episode of Fatfada 5 to 5, talking about the burning desire, the Afghani, and patriotism. And uh, today also, I will remind myself and you that yesterday was the 10th of Muharram. 10th of Muharram was a very holy day for the Muslims and for the Jewish brothers and sisters, is a day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Moses from being drowned in the sea and drowned Pharaoh and his army. That's number one. It's a day where uh, the Prophet sallallahu on the fourth year of Hijrah uh, won a battle against uh, the disbelievers in the Arabia Peninsula without fighting by Allah throwing the fear, the fear in their hearts. And it's called the battlefield of uh, the, that al-Raqa'a, which is because they are putting a lot of patches on their feet, because this was bleeding, because they were walking for a low, very long distance for this battlefield, but there was no fight at that battlefield. Also, the tenth of Muharram is the day where uh, Adam, our father Adam, peace be upon him, descended to earth with his wife, our mother, peace be upon her, and Allah forgiven both of them. Number four is this is the day where uh, Allah saved Noah, Noah with his believers and every uh, pair of animals and birds and whatever it is on his ark and uh, came to safety at the time of flooding. Last and not least was a very uh, sad incident happened to one of the dearest uh, uh, scholars and character uh, of Islam, in the history of Islam, is uh, Al-Imam Al-Hussein, when he was killed mercilessly on that day, the day of Ashura, by the uh, tyrant group. And uh, a very brutal killing, unfortunately. And we all uh, remember that. And unfortunately, after that time, the Muslim Ummah split into more than one piece. Uh, I thank my colleague. Uh, also, I forgot to mention that on that day, if you fasted it already, uh, Allah will forgive you one year past. And if you don't fast this year, Allah, when you don't fast it next year, Allah will forgive for uh, one, uh, the sins of one year past for you. I thank my colleague Aya for preparing the presentation, and I will talk later on about the drawing which I drew myself uh, last week. Uh, as I mentioned to you many times before, every day uh, the Facebook keeps sending me a lot of posts, messages, images, and I keep visiting them, reshuffling them, especially my statements, and revisit it again, uh, and revisit it again, and uh, uh, create a talk out of it. Today I talk about three parts of it, three, three, three issues. The first one is the burning desire. The second one is a, a very renowned scholar called Afghani, and he is Mujtahid. And his statement about who are the cursed people by all the religions. The third one is those people who are patriotic and what's patriotism. The burning desire. The definition of the burning desire in the, in the dictionary is the strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for every uh, for, for something to happen. That's your desire. Okay, keep, keep in your heart. The philosophical definition is to be in a particular state of mind. It's a state of mind familiar to everyone who has ever wanted to drink water. Okay? or desired to know what has happened to an old friend, but its familiarity does not make it easy to give theory of desire. 
This is the definition, the linguistic and the philosophical definition. There's 10 different kinds of desires I mentioned to you here. You can see it on the slide, but you can make them 40, 30, 20, 15, five, seven, seven, up to you. It's entirely up to you. Number one, which is the most famous one, when I say the burning desire, talk, everybody talk about sex between the different, uh, the male and the female, was it lawful or unlawful? Recently or not recently, it's actually also happened between the same sex uh, in, in, in the past and happening up till now. Also some people, unfortunately nowadays, are committing this kind of uh, activities to animals, unfortunately. Uh, which is uh, Islamic jurisprudence has dealt with it long time ago. Uh, the, 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 the burning there for loving to drink, the food and drink, whether this food and drink are halal or not halal. Clothing, spending all the money and the time, just nothing to do by buying clothes, changing clothes, and housing as well. Uh, to become famous, fame shown off, ostentation, pomposity, all these kinds, which drives the people to be on the spotlight, on the spotlight. Uh, number four, um, number five is to become a leader. People are dying to become a minister, to become chairman, to become director, to become president, to become king, to become queen, and they can give up everything for it. And you can see it nowadays, even they can sell their homeland to become just a president or a king for one day, or a prince. Crime, some people love to commit crime, theft, stealing, killing, actually raping people. And uh, number four, torturing people and persecuting people, especially in the prison, especially in the prison. Uh, revenge and humiliation, some people actually never forgive people who done something wrong to them. And when they revenge, they will be very bad on torturing them in the state of revenge and humiliating them. Harming others, harming people. They say, see, this is, oh, I wish, and you go this way to harm others. Number 10 is uh, the, the burning desire to, to, to enjoy the, the suffering, the groaning, the agony, and the whimping of people whom you are torturing them. And more, more kinds, but it's entirely up to you. Why I'm making all this fuss? You see, uh, nearly less than two weeks ago, I was watching the coverage of uh, the transfer of uh, one of the most brilliant uh, football player and gifted from Barcelona to Paris Saint-Germain excessive coverage as in why that's why i'm making this fuss number one i just thought to, to ask myself this excessive coverage is it natural or has been paid by the chairmen of these two clubs it's number one number two this amount the huge amount of money being paid by the chairmen or by the sponsor or by the clubs okay Particularly, have two chairmen, Arab chairmen of football clubs, one of them in Manchester City, the other one is in Paris Saint Germain. They are very young, talented, experienced, good businessmen, but the amount of money is being spent on the process of transfer and buying new players, particularly Paris Saint Germain, that bought about five players. I ask you, young people, to go and calculate how much money has been spent on this transfer in these two clubs, especially, particularly chaired by the two young Arab uh, businessmen, actually, uh, over the last few years. Is it coming to become 1 billion euro or less, or whatever it is? Could have been better, actually, to spend some of this money on a lot of humanitarian crises affecting Syria, Yemen, Eritrea, Lebanon, Iraq, Palestine, Rohingya, Kashmir, Ugor, 
Democratic Problem of Congo, Central African Republic, African Sub-Saharan countries, and others, Latin America and others. All the fires which are affecting the wars in Turkey, Lebanon, Cyprus, Greece, Italy, Algeria, Tunisia, and recently France. And with it is Russia as well. But in the background of this young businessman, these questions came to me. I'm not actually uh, denying or attacking anyone, but I'm just trying to raise the awareness for this huge amount of money while we are surrounding by this global humanitarian catastrophe. Uh, how can we describe such a behavior? Being unaware, lack of awareness, or societal ignorance, could be. The second point, not being a part of humanity, you're not a part of the people living on this planet. Number three, uh, the burning desire, the fame, somebody would love to spend all his or her wealth just to be seen that they are on the media. Number four, uh, surrendering yourself, prostrating or lying down before other cultures, superiority, inferiority, or inferiority, superiority complexes. Number five, being keen to prove that you are civilized. And you are a part of the creative, the creative industry of what? Of the new humanitarian, civil, civilized policies. Because we know that in the West, you become a very rich and wealthy uh, businessman or woman, you go and chair a, sp a sports club, okay? As a kind of the prestige or the status of the family or the business. Number six, or could be considered inattention, yani, with good intention, negligence, and forgive all of them. I am not attacking anybody, but I'm trying to raise the awareness of such huge amount of money spent while on, on, on this football. By the way, I love football. I watch football. I love Barcelona. I love Paris Saint-Germain. I love Manchester City and United and others, but against them. I'm talking about the huge amount of money spent while hundreds of millions of people are suffering from a lot of things, poverty, deprivation, sicknesses, ignorance, and others. This is the first problem. The second problem, somebody called Jamal al-Din Afghani. As a great philosopher, thinker, and mujtahid. And he mentioned in one of his pieces, uh, who is the individual is cursed by all religions, not only Islam. May the curse, he said, may the curse of the merciful be upon that one who, that is what he said in Arabic, and that's what I'm saying in English. Abuin that one who imprisons nation, strangles ideology, raises a whip against someone, kills an opinion, builds a prison, raises the flag of tyranny. Such individual who abuses human rights. Jamal al-Din Afghani was talking about human rights in the 19th centuries. That's one who abuses human rights. is cursed. The one who abuses human rights is cursed by all the religion. Even if he or she prays, fasts, gives charities, recites and memorizes the Quran all life. In his opinion of uh, scholar Jamal al-Din Afghani, he is cursed by all religion. Down here in present nations, strangles ideology, raises a whip against someone, kills an opinion, builds a prison, raises the flags of tyranny. Such one 
who abuses the human rights is cursed by all religion, even if he or she prays, fasts, gives charity, and recites Quran day and night, and make qiyam al-layl, and other as well. What is the definition of curse? It's a clear and obvious desire for someone like myself or yourself that he or she hope to see hardship and adversity in any shape to affect someone else or people or any entity. And I have such a desire to see others are suffering from something. Okay. And in particular, it's a desire that the supernatural can harm others through prayers or black magic. And I say it again, it's a clear and obvious desire for someone that he or she hope to see hardships and adversities in any shape or form to affect someone else, people or identity. This is in the uh, religious philosophies and dogmas. In the Arabic, language, it is the curse of Allah. The curse of Allah is the punishment and the expulsion of such individual from Allah's mercy and depriving him or them from Allah's goodness. Okay? The main reason behind this curse from Allah is their evil deeds, the evil deed which is done by them. Shar, evil shar, deed, the evil deed done by such wicked individuals. And this is some of the references, you can read it later on. What are the most famous curses which known? Okay, the first one, Tutankhamun, curse. When they excavate his tomb, and most of the men were involved in this excavation died either of fever, blood poison, and or commit suicide. This happened in a very mysterious circumstance. Number two, the family of Kennedy or Kennedy's family. It's curse. First, he was assassinated. Then his brother, Bob, was assassinated. Then one of his relatives, Rosemary, was, was, was actually died having surgical operation. Then Ted Kennedy died also in a car accident. Then another four members of the family died in a plane crash in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. A 16 Piper Sarasota uh, plane crash in the Atlantic Ocean, and this called it the Kennedy's uh, curse. The third one, which is the curse of the snowman called Otzi. It was discovered, this snowman, between the border of Italy and Austria, 1991, and he was buried under the snow for 5,000 years. Seven of the people who were involved in discovering his body died mysteriously. But I myself don't believe in that, but I believe in black magic. I believe in jinni. I believe in uh, envies. But for the curse, big question mark. The third point is about patriotism and how you love your homeland. Those who love their homelands, they have to do the following. Stifle their anger, concede, Reconcile, forgive, and be good to the others. If you love your country, your country or your homeland, you have to stifle your anger. You have to concede, reconcile, and forgive others, and be good to others. And will be able also. This will make you because when someone is angry, now now I'm angry. I'm fighting. I cannot see who is in front of me. I cannot hear. I cannot listen. I cannot comprehend. I cannot respond. But if I stifle my anger, I'll be able to see the main objective, to see my homeland, to see my country, to see my people, to see everyone. 
be able to see their homelands, and those who will see their homelands will be the benevolent ones, because they will look at the bigger issue, not on the smaller issue. Patriotism is a belief in a message of reconstructing the unity of our homeland. The belief in a message of reconstructing the unity of our homeland. The belief in this construction is not a hot air discussion. It's a back aching, sometimes back breaking. And it's time consuming, constructive building process. Time consuming, constructive building process. Patriotism is the unlimited giving and the offer of our loyalty to whom? To our creator. To shower his blessing on our homeland. So what does the love mean for us? Love is preserving the capabilities of nations. If you love your nation, if you are patriotic, you have to preserve the capabilities of the nation. Correcting the path of the people. The patriotic making the patriotic reading of history encyclopedia, not actually your own personal feeling what benefits the country, the nation. Building the future generations, laying down the foundation of patriotism and reconciliation together. Patriotism and reconciliation together. Love is a symphony encyclopedia played by the throats, the throat strings of every believing citizen. Love as well is a symphony, encyclopedia, played by the throat strings of every believing citizens. We have to ask ourselves this. Do we love ourselves, our leaders, our political parties, our religious groups, our desires, our homelands, or our lords? The question is personal, but the answer also could be personal, but it has to be public later on. It has to be public later on. Don't ever humiliate your homelands. With what? With personalization, you become subjective. Politicization, militarization, securitization, Okay, leadershipization, we you worship your leader, partisanization to worship your political party, re re religious, re relig religiousization. Actually, you cannot see any other religion but your own religion. That's wrong. That means that you humiliate the other religion and the other culture and the other values. Discussion after after discussing these three. Uh, issues. Now we need to uh, put a discussion like you people write your thesis, master or MBA or PhD or MD, and then the discussion. As I mentioned to you, the three, the tripartite, I discussed the tripartite. And did this tripartite, the first one was emotionality. I discussed the emotionality of the burning desire. The second, the citation of the great scholar, Jamal Din Afghani, about who is cursed by our religion. The third one, patriotism. The burning czar, it's a natural instinct or typically fixed patterns of, patterns of behavior in people, animal, and other creations. To what? To preserve their productivity and their ex existence. This is something that Allah, the creator, has put in every creation, even plants, even fish and insects and others. The most well-known amongst them publicly, come back and reduce the 10 to 5. Number five, one is the sexual desire, which is the burning desire, which I mentioned before, very famous. When you talk about burning desire, it goes to uh, Google, it takes you to this, uh, pages or this uh, this uh, YouTube's talking about uh, lust. Okay, whether this is this relationship is legitimate or illegitimate. 
The number one, the number two is collecting and keeping wealth and money. Number three is your family, your children. Number four is having the power, the authority, and the glory in your hand. Number five, fame, showing off ostentation and pomposity. But Islam has did all this and made the down frameworks, policies, and the guidelines to discipline and restrain the people like myself and others. First, I and the Quran talking about, this is 46, Surah Kev. Wealth and children are but adornment of the early life. Yani, but the enduring good deeds, enduring the lasting ones, uh, are better to your Lord for reward and better for hope. What are these good deeds, good righteous deeds? Al-Baqiyat al-Salihat. Number one of these good deeds or these good and righteous intentions, deeds, the intention and determination. Okay. Visit it. Establishing prayers, sunan, nawafir, which is voluntary and super erogatory prayers. Good action, benefiting people and societies. Mentioning and invocating Allah and praising Allah by praising uh, lullaby, magnification of Allah, making special prayer on the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family, promotion of virtue and prohibition of vice. These are the good deeds. These are the good righteous deeds which last forever. Allah also warned us and show us how to, to restrain our desire. He said in Surah Taghabun 15, your wealth and your children are but a trial. And Allah has with him a great reward. Also, he said in another surah, Al-Imran 134, Oh, you have believed indeed amongst your spouses and your children are enemies to you. So beware of them. But if you pardon and overlook and forgive, then indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. This is the way to try to control your desire. Uh, this is the same. And also, uh, those who suppress anger and pardon people and good loves, the doers of good. This is what Allah mentioned in many verses in the Quran. With these signs, we can restrain our burning desires by what? See, these are the verses from Allah, from the Quran. But how can we transfer this into action? We can restrain our burning desire by taming, competing ourselves, and saving them from the falseness, falseness of the world and its bad consequences. How? This is what the Prophet said. On the authority of Abu Umama al Bahli, he said, Prophet Sallam, peace be upon him, Sallam said, I guarantee a house in heaven and the paradise for the one, like each one of you, who abandons argument while he is right. I guarantee a house for him in heaven for this individual who abandons argument while he is actually uh, right. It's his right to argue, but he said no. On the authority of Jabir, the, the message of Allah uh, said, 
I don't intoxicate much of it. ما كثيره يذكر قليله حرام. What it is making you drunk by drinking a lot of it, small sips of it is forbidden. يعني I do not intoxicate much of it. يعني أنا ما بشربش كتير منها. Because, because so little is forbidden. So little is forbidden. Narrated by Ahmed and the four um, as well. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu said, the Mujahid, which is the one who is actually struggling to control himself or herself, is the one who strives against him or herself for the sake of Almighty Allah. And they showed us the way how to control our desires. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, three things. If the one of you, the one of us, does it, you or she, uh, he or she, they will test the taste of Iman, the taste of faith. What are they? First of all, worships Allah alone, oneness. Number two, gives zakah generously, every year willingly. Number three, purify himself or herself. They asked the Prophet ﷺ, how can we purify our souls? That's get the nafs. He said to them, to know that Allah is with you whenever you are, wherever you are. This is the scat in nafs. Ta'bud Allah, ka'annaka tara, fa illam takun tara, fa anna wash Allah as if you see him. But if you don't see him, be sure that he is always observing you. Another hadith of guidance from the Prophet Sallallahu who said, Umar radiallahu anhu said, uh, when Jibreel came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he was asking Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi about Islam, Iman, uh, then he went, he was asking Jibreel and Muhammad Sallallahu was answering. Then he went to ask him something. What is benevolence? And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said to worship Allah and if, as if you see him, but if you do not see him, be sure that he sees you. This is mentioned in Bukhari. Not only the Prophet and Allah mentioned to us how to protect ourselves from our burning desire, but one of the scholars called Maimun ibn Mahran, who said, a man is not pious until he or she has an accountability for himself. and his partner. They said, this was, uh, why, that's why it was said, the soul is like treacherous partner. And the partner is the soul, okay? If you don't hold such a partner, the soul or the self, if you don't hold the soul or the self accountable, the soul or the self will run away with your money. If you have this treach uh, tre treacherous partner, which is your soul, your partner, you have to control them and you have to be making them accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yourself. Also, uh, Ahmad narrated that Wahab said, it's written in the ruling of the book of Dawood, peace be upon him, alayhi salam. It becomes a compelling duty on the wise man, like all of you, to have four hours every day. Four hours every day. One hour to communicate, to converse with Allah, with his Lord, or her Lord. Another hour, to make himself accountable to what he has done right or wrong and what she has done right or wrong. The third one, the third hour, is when you sit down with sincere, pious friends 
who advise you. Number four is the fourth hour is to do something permissible for you, halal for you, halal to enjoy yourself. And this fourth hour will help you to purify the hearts of yourself. So you cannot just go straight in a very hard way without having this stop to have enjoyment, the part of enjoyment in your life. Halal, lawful, legitimate, not a lawful uh, and haram one. Also, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Tawbah 24, and this is uh, something which is very important. If your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your relatives, wealth, which you have obtained, commerce, were in you fear decline, and dwellings which, with which you are pleased are more beloved to you than Allah, and his messenger and jihad in his course, all these are more beloved to you than Allah, his messengers and jihad for Allah's cause, then wait until Allah execute his command on you. And Allah does not guide the defiantly disobedient people, okay? It was mentioned in the honorable hadith as well, that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the wise person is the one who condemned himself and works for what comes after this. And the impotent idiot is the one who follows his own desires and wishes, oh, Allah is gafur, Allah is forgiver. Allah is merciful and the wishes for God's desires. Also, the Prophet said or forbid us from marrying what we call them Khadra or Dimon, which is the green blooded, which is an Arab word. Nobody understood what Khadra or Dimon means. He said Khadra or Dimon is the beautiful woman in the bad atmosphere or in the bad built the place. Not only women and men as well. Because I'm very handsome man, but he'd been born and lived and I'm brought in this bad birth place. This is a discussion of the first point. The second point, which is the cursed people by in our religion by Afghani. First of all, let us talk about who is Afghani. He was born in Asadabad in, in, in 1838 and died in, in, in 1897. He remains, the remains of his body were transferred to Kabul in 1944. Among his students could be Imam Muhammad Abdul of Egypt. His concern at that time, at the end of 19th century or the middle of 19th century was what? His Islamic unity between East and West, North and South. The second one facing the Western threats, culture, education, okay? He was one of the signs of renewal during the modern era of Arab and Islamic Renaissance. He summarized the characteristics of the cursed people by all the religion in the following. Who are they? Those people who are undermining the liberties of people, which lead to liberties, which lead to killing the thoughts, killing the creativity, killing the innovation and killing the societal, social, jurisprudential renovation. This is undermining, this one is going to be cursed by everyone, by a, the religions or the religions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, the one who transferred his country and state into a widely capacitating sprawling prisons having multiple repressive, brutal behaviors, besides building actual concrete presence guarded by human devils who are more brutal than the 
genie devil, demons. This is the second one. Who made his country land or homeland a prison. Number three, the one who promote, promoting the culture of repressive philosophy and making it normal moral values and behavior. Promoting the culture of repressive philosophy and making it normal moral values and behavior. Changing the dogmatic religious beliefs into rituals, rites, hymns, incantation, amulets, slogans, and poems, customs, and colors, demonstration, and chanting. This is one of the people who be cursed by all the religion. Even of those who are undermining the liberties of people, even for them, if they were in constant prayers, fasting, reading and the Hessian Quran regularly and the giving charity to the poor people, standing up by night, the whole night, to pray and recite and cry, they still will be cursed by Allah because their worship did not command them to command virtue and forbid vice. And this is in the opinion of Jamal al-Din Afghani, the scholar of the 19th century. In his opinion, the religion, as the Afghani seems to understand, is an organizing system of systems that can organize the different walks of life, but according to the great law of the universe, laid down by the creator of life. I say it again. Religion, religion, as Afghani seems to understand, is an organizing system of systems that can organize the different walks of life, but according to the great law of the universe laid down by the creator of Allah. How and why? Ask the question. To make life easy for them, to discover its treasures, the treasures in the, in, in the universe, to enjoy its bounties according to the spatial and temporal deeds, needs, not deeds, uh, to, to enjoy its bounties according to the spatial and temporal needs, which of its constant, of its constant, its constants are the political, economical, social, and climate change. Change is constant in all this. Religion does not rule societies, okay, except with, and when you tell others that I would like my religion to rule, you have to provide the others, those, what I mentioned now. With this, knowledge and learning, you don't get somebody who are ignorant or idiot, jurisprudence and become jurisprudent. And people understand the, 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 the jurisprudence. Comprehension and understanding, questioning and accountability, freedom and reassurance, justice and fairness, peace and safety, devoutness and belief, deduction and submission. Familiarity and acceptance. Familiarity and acceptance. Cognition and uh, inquiry. Equality and respect, rule and recognition, regularity and hard work, participation and commitment. If somebody tells you how the religion should believe, you have to give both him this as a parameters. Knowledge and learning, jurisprudence and, jurispr and, and become jurisprudent comprehension and understanding, questioning and accountability, freedom and reassurance, justice and fairness, peace and safety, devoutness and belief, deduction and submission, familiarity and acceptance, cognition and inquiry, uh, equality and respect, rule and recognition, regularity and hard work, participation and commitment. But we have to create for these principles path 
path to run through them. And all these principles should run through a path, framework, and policies to protect them. What are these paths? Maintaining the state civil civility and prohibiting securitization and militarization. This is number one. Creating adequate civil liberty space. Number two, following these basic principles, more principles inside it. Diligence, which means industriousness, assiduousness, and distad, based on cognitive knowledge and experience. There's nothing called diligence, okay, without knowledge and the experience. Creativity, innovation, pioneering, based on piety and fearing of Allah, knowledge, cognition, social needs, and deprivation. Number three, leaving no one behind. Number four, no to any marginalization of minorities, different cultures, and religion, as well as clans. No marginalization. Number six, participation and empowerment of young people and women. This is the image of the late Jamaluddin Afghani, and this is what he's mentioned uh, more than a century and a half ago. This is the image which I, I, I draw for you. Of course, this is his uh, image on the left-hand side for me. And the tree represent, the fruitful tree represent the homeland, which all these different trees coming at different seasons, the red, the yellow, the orange, the, the blue, and the football and lipstick represent the uh, burning desire. The third point is our homeland. Patriots showing their patriotism. Today, I'm not going to talk about nation, state, or others. Let us talk about how to build the system, industrial system, to create those patriotic people and patriotism in the country. The first one is the small family, the husband and the, the, the wife, the mother and the father. And the Prophet وسلم, male and female. And the Prophet said, I mentioned this hadith before, beware of the green blooded. He said, what, who is she? He said, the beautiful woman inside the bad home. Could, it will, could be also applied to the handsome man in the bad atmosphere. So don't touch them, don't marry them. If both parents are patriotic, their children most probably will become patriotic as well. Even the fetus inside the womb of the mother will love what he hears of discussion between the parents well, because they listen. They sometimes taste the food. If, they are, if the mother and the father are angry, he feels that or she feels that. And the discussion with their colleagues. Then the breastfed babies and the toddlers, they listen, they see, they observe, they cannot communicate. But they will, this will, the institutional memory at the back of their mind will be there forever. Unfortunately, up to now, we didn't discover the secret world of these fetuses, babies, and toddlers yet. This is a smaller family, you have to choose the individual who becomes your partner in a very lawful way. The greater family, which is the extended family, the grandfather, the uncles, the aunties, and the friends and the relatives and the neighbors, if they are patriotic or not. The state and the, and the government, if the government is promoting patriotism or not, not patriotism to an individual, but to the homeland. The state, of, the state institution as well, educational, cultural, uh, religious, uh, all the programs, okay? The civil society organization, think tanks, research centers, uh, social icons, uh, role models, artists, poets, literati, writers, tribal leaders, and clans, and others. All those 
have to promote patriotism to enable the people to become patriotic. And the last and not least, the businessman and the institutional, economical institution. Patriotism is a climate industry allowing its fruitful trees to spread the seeds of their fruits and change their lands into thick forests, wonderful habitats, harmonious lives, variable cultures, coherent values, established principles, forgiving behaviors, and numerous paths expressing the love of the inhabitants to the passerby from amongst the poor, the needy, those in debts, the underdogs, from amongst the refugees, displaced people, and destitute. We find inside this magnificent love industry or industry of love, the ability of the creator in perfecting the creativity when creating his magnificent creative creation who are composing the harmoniously concerted symphony. We find, I say it again, because it's heavy, we find inside this magnificent love industry or the industry of love, the ability of the creator in perfecting the creativity when creating his magnificent creative creations who are composing harmoniously concerted symphony of the beauty of life and the integrality of the eternity of the creator of life. The beauty of life and the integrality of the eternity of the creator of life. Number five, which is our message to young people. We have discussed together the above social tripartite. And I believe it's not new for you. It's happening for centuries. It's not new theory or pioneering discoveries. We know that the burning desire is a natural instinct of productivity to protect different creations from extinction including human being. Allah is prophets, Allah is prophets, then the social reformers guided us through different courses of action to different methodology, organizing and restraining such an instinct. So with one hand, he showed us how to protect our races from extinction. And with the other hand, he taught us how to control our burning desires. We have the control, we have to control our burning desire and change them into positive social energies, enabling us to protect our national resources and build in the future, build the future for generations to come. Be careful, young people. We have we have to control our burning desire and change them into protective, positive social energies, enabling us to protect our national resources and build the future for generations to come. Be careful of not changing our love into something uncontrollable, into uncontrollable burning desires. Be careful of not changing our love to something into uncontrollable burning desire. I give examples, sports, arts, literary, are permissible unless they contradict Sharia principles. Supporting such activities is permissible, particularly if this lead to benefiting our countries. But as for the extravagance, and the despondency of spending money, even if it was private money, this is hated by scholars and the public and could become forbidden, especially when looking around and observe the immense suffering of the hundreds of millions of people surrounding us. Have the balance between spending on what we like and spending what the needs of 
our communities. We have to create this a balance, a balance in the spending between what we desire and what the poor people need. Because we have not, we are not living on this planet alone. It's because we are not living on this planet alone. This is the first point about the bending there. Second point about uh, the cursed people in all the religion of God. The greatest sin or crime committed against societies, nations, and countries in the recent history is, is to be controlled, ruled, and governed by armed persons or personals. Even if this weapon in his hand or her hand was a stone, terrifying the innocent, peaceful people. Say this again. The great sin or crime committed against societies, nations, and countries in the recent history is to be controlled, ruled, or governed by armed persons, even if the, this arms is a stone terrifying the innocent, peaceful citizens. Those armed personnel, which is security and military, jobs, what are the jobs should be? To be either to protect the citizens from crimes by fighting criminals inside the country or protecting the country's border by preventing foreign enemies from invading its territories. This is their job. Nothing else, and which is very only respectable job. Those army personnel would not be able, would not have the ability to do the following: to manage dialogue and discussion, or discussion to coordinate or manage the process of lawmaking, drafting and formulating legislation, knowing the different needs of different societies creating the visions for future generations. Because this is not their job. No, not undermining them. Their job is either to fight criminals and crimes inside the country, or to protect fight the enemy and protect the border of the country. They cannot manage dialogue, discussion, coordinate or manage process of lawmaking, drafting and formulating legislation, knowing the different needs of different societies, creating the visions for future generations. Why? People ask. Because weapons are tools of destruction, demolition, fear, and terrorism, and not tools of safety, reassurance, construction, and harmony. It scares. Once you are having something in your hand, it scares you. Weapon in your hand. Dear wise young men, let us believe that present construction is a clear, incisive mark of weakness of the armed present warden. They are weak because they want to lock people inside. They imprison not only individuals, they imprison the selves in the chests, the thoughts in the hearts, the consciousness in the souls, the creativity in the minds, the innovation in the intention, the renewal, in the feeling, the building, building renaissance and the constructing civilization, in what? In the dark depths of time. I said again, they imprison what? They imprison the selves in the chests, thoughts in the hearts, consciousness in the souls, creativity in the minds, innovation in the intention, renewal in the feeling, building renaissance and construction civilization in the dark depths of time. Dear young people, to conclude with this, be careful of becoming tomorrow's armed prison wardens. Be careful of becoming tomorrow's armed prison warden. Don't acknowledge weapon as, a, as tools, conflict as a way, prison as safety and terrorism as friendliness. No. 
not uh, uh, not, not uh, uh, weapon as tools, conflict as a way, present as safety, and terrorism as friendliness. Don't legislate liberties deprivation, thoughts burial and muzzling. Don't legislate. Don't approve injustice. Follow the hypocrisy of the hypocrite and the cheating of the intruders, but follow justice, establish fairness, and give liberties to people. Don't forget virtue and hate vice. Don't ignore suffering and spread tyranny. No. Don't highlight lying, deceiving, falseness, but promote justice, fairness, and equity. Let us be aware that our homeland is repertoire. Our society is incubator. Our people has covering as the covering up for our mistakes. Let us highlight lying. Let us don't highlight lying, deceiving, falseness, but promote justice, fairness, and equity. Let us be aware that our homeland is repertoire. Our society is incubator. Our people has covering of the covering up for our mistakes. Please love your homelands. Be protected by your societies and covered by your fellow citizens. Thank you very much for being patient to listen to me on this very long talk. And I will see you next week in another uh, episode of Fat Father uh, 5 to 5, uh, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.